I have voted previously to repeal these 1099 reporting requirements, and but for broad Republican opposition, these requirements would have been repealed a long time ago. I am a little amused to hear one of our Republican colleagues actually say this morning they're bewildered as to why there are all these requirements on small businesses around the country as a result of this provision. I can cure your be bewilderment. Get a mirror, mirror out and look in the mirror because you will see the Republicans who voted against repealing this provision last year. No, this is not about repealing 1099. It is about shifting the burden onto working families while at the same time protecting insurance monopolies. Under current law, despite the vigorous, determined efforts of these Republicans to undermine every aspect of health insurance reform, under current law, working families will receive an opportunity to access health insurance. And each year, the government will match some of the workers' pay for their health insurance. Uh, the precise amount of the pay is determined by how low the worker's salary is. A minimum wage worker would get a little more assistance than someone who's up at a little higher level. This bill ensures that the health insurance company will get to keep all of that federal match, but it treats the working family considerably differently. If you have an employer who really shows ability, who may have a fairly menial or mundane job, but they do it and they do it with pride, they do it well. If that employee excels and the employer rewards them with a bonus, if they recognize that that employee is really trying hard and they decide we're going to give you a little promotion and you'll get a little more pay, or perhaps as with so many families around this country, that employee decides I'll never make it for my family on this. I'm going to moonlight. I'm going to take an extra job. And under any of these developments for the enterprising worker, the Republicans propose today a penalty, a tax on success. Because at the end of that year, after that law-abiding employee has properly estimated their income from 12 months earlier, if their pay went up a dollar over the level, they get a steep penalty. They may have to pay literally thousands of dollars back even though they only got a bonus of a few hundred dollars. They would owe the value perhaps of the entire credit to the IRS. And what type of people are we talking about? Well, if the law had been fully effective as I wish it had been this year, a worker who was earning $43,560 if they got a bonus that took them up to $43,600, they would have owed the full amount of the credit at the end of the year. May I have an additional minute? No, an additional two minutes. Gentlemen's recognized. A thousand dollars, perhaps three or four thousand dollars to a family as a penalty, a tax on success, is a big amount to that family. But understand the, the dimensions of how big the burden that they want to shift to working families is. The total, according to their own uh, report on this bill, is 20, almost $25 billion over the next decade. It's, we're not talking about a small amount of money. We're talking about a significant amount of money in this Republican penalty on success. And why haven't they been out here responding to this penalty on success? They want to refer to these people as cheats. These people aren't cheats. They're people that are the best of America who are striving and working to get ahead and then they get penalized for their success. They have no answer because there is no answer. We should have passed this bill last year and passed it by paying for it, by closing international corporate tax loopholes. Naturally, they resist that just as they resist any attempt to control insurance monopolies. Vote no on this penalty for success uh, that would be imposed on our working families vote against this piece of legislation. Thank